Let's jump right in with Alan Corwin, shall we? Everything the news media gives you about guns is crap. Is it beyond crap? It's insane. Yeah. They talk about. I heard a guy talking about 200 round magazines. Now there is no such thing as a 200 round magazine. And if you've ever lifted 200 rounds of ammo, you know it's heavy. Of course. And a 200 rounds of 223, you can't effectively handle the firearm. What you want to have is a 17-round magazine in a manageable, decent pistol, like let's say a Glock or a Sig, and two spare 17-round magazines on your belt, and five other guys with the same amount of ammo. So you've got 250 rounds of ammo from six firing positions. Any legislator who proposes an infringement deserves to be removed from office summarily. End of conversation, and let's get back to teaching children field-stripping rifles grades K through 12. Absolutely beautiful. You know, debating things in Congress is not such a bad idea. Debating a bill that's an infringement is grounds for removal because they take an oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. That's Mm -hmm. language in the Constitution. And the bill does have some things that are valuable. If these legislators, once again, I'm a moderate, if these legislators (laughs) are proposing that we be able to buy firearms anywhere in the country, I would support that. If they're suggesting that you can't transfer a firearm from any person to any person, well, that's not good. Or if you can only transfer a firearm to somebody you're married to, well, that's a ridiculous infringement, regardless of where you stand on. And the correct phrase, by the way, is holy matrimony, not marriage, holy matrimony. It's a function of the church. The state is supposed to have nothing to do with it. If you can find a church that will marry you to a goat, that's between you. That's between you and the church. You want to marry seven people all at the same time? <laughs> no, no, marriage is wrong. <laughs> if, if you want to marry seven people all together and they're all alive and one of them's a goat, that's between you and the church. Oh, Tina, come and get he, your dinner, you fat lord. It, right, a Gosh. good freak never leaves his sheep behind. His sheep behind. <laughs> um, it, it, you never want to set social policy or tax policy based on marital status or your number of kids, so we should leave that out of this. But your ability to transfer a firearm, yes, we should fix that. And so I'm not immediately saying let's get rid of these legislators, but if they propose we debate these bills so that we can infringe our rights, then removal from office is actually too easy. They deserve punishment, right? When you violate your Bill of Rights, when you discriminate against people, you're supposed to go to prison. So I wouldn't be so soft on them as just to remove them. We're negotiating here with people who ultimately, they're evil. You do not give a beachhead to the enemy because they're going to use that to prosecute the next assault. And if you're surrounded by hungry jackals, I submit that nowhere in nature is it a smart idea to throw them a scrap of flesh and think that they're going to go away. That's a good point. It is well said. Connecticut Senator is it actually urged Fox News not to air Oh yes. the NRA 500 race Yes, I heard about from this. Texas Motor Speedway. Yes, sir. Senator Murphy. Now, I have the full text of this boneheaded idiot's. Uh, so it's okay. You see, they don't want to infringe. They don't care about your First Amendment rights. Mm-mm. They don't care. They've called millions of you, millions of you, extremist, basically jackasses, because you're an NRA member. Forget the fact that you're a law enforcement officer, or you're active duty military, or you're a veteran, or you're a mom, or you're a dad, or the millions of other everyday, hardworking, taxpaying, law-abiding citizens. You have an NRA membership card. Murphy doesn't even respect your First Amendment rights. The media has become one of the greatest enemies of American freedom. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. One Absolutely. of the greatest enemies. They suppress news. They twist news. They give you false stories. They don't give you the truth. They treat the NRA. Here's their take on the NRA. The powerful gun lobby, the most powerful gun lobby in Washington. Mm-hmm. Now, the NRA has a degree of power. But who are the top ten lobbies? Look it up. The oil companies, the railroads, telecommunications, the computer firms, the banks. That's the most powerful lobbies. The NRA is way down the list. They're behind one of the Indian tribes. I'm (laughs) serious. It's true. 
<laughs> no, it is true. It's just the way you say it. I know, I know. That's you know. That's why people go to gunlaws.com, read my e-blast. It's beautiful. Sign up. You get the truth from me. You get I the truth. The freaking research. These guys don't even read the bills. They yeah. yell and scream about Mansion yeah. Toomey. Right. They, before the bill is out, I get a copy early and tell people about the 11 pages it gives away $100 million. That still isn't in the news, and everybody has the bill by now. Mm-hmm. But the NRA is a civil rights organization. You should never call them a gun lobby like the media does. They're a civil rights organization. The biggest gun safety training organization on the planet. They train the police. They train the military. They train tens of thousands of instructors. If you get gun safety training anywhere, it comes from an NRA certified trainer because they're the ones who do it. That's who the NRA is. Ask the media if they understand that. No, I I rest my case. Next. No, they, they not only did they not know, they don't want to know, they don't look into it. Let me read you a part of the, the opening paragraph of uh, this letter from Connecticut Senator Murphy. No, no, do I have to listen to you this? You have to listen to this. Instead, please. <laughs> you have to listen to this, and we'll give it over to David Codry. want to marry a goat. <laughs> Man. Dear Mr. Murdoch. You're wrong. I, I write today to urge you to not broadcast NASCAR's NRA 500 at Texas Motor Speedway on April 13th. That in and of itself is astonishing. This race, which is being sponsored by the National Rifle Association, NRA, is going to take place during the Senate's consideration of legislation to reduce gun violence. The race not only brings national attention to an organization that has been the face of one side of this heated debate, it also features the live shooting of guns at the end of the race. The winner fires off two six-guns loaded with blanks. Oh, my God. And puts a cowboy hat on. This celebration of guns is this celebration of guns is inappropriate in the immediate wake of the Newtown Massacre. But uh. most importantly, broadcasting this race, which will highlight the NRA and its radical agenda during this time, sends a harmful signal to the families affected by gun violence, as well as the millions of Americans who support sensible gun control measures and enjoy your sports programming. I could go on, but it's vomit-inducing enough. David Codria, your thoughts on Senator Murphy's utter want willingness to suppress the First Amendment rights of Fox News because yeah, first, he yeah. hates gun owners and the Second Amendment rights. Sure, and he's using, he's abusing his power as a senator uh, to basically threaten a heavily regulated uh, uh, broadcaster and figured that, you know what, if he has a problem with NRA, they're really going to have a problem with Oath Keepers because they're putting together uh, a collection to try to get people to help them sponsor a car driven by Jeffrey Earnhardt, who is the grandson of the great Dale Earnhardt, the nephew of Dale Earnhardt Jr. And Dale Earnhardt Jr., by the way, said that uh, he didn't have a problem. He, he thought that shooting the guns afterwards was absolutely appropriate. Uh, but the bottom line is now, if they have a problem with NRA, we've talked before about Oath Keepers on this program and the way the Southern Poverty Law Center tries to paint them as domestic terrorists and, and totally smears them. And uh, so what are they going to do now that Oath Keepers is trying to get a car in NASCAR for a race that's due to be run in June up in Delaware? I'm sick and tired. I'm fed up with being demonized as a law-abiding, responsible gun owner simply because I'm a law-abiding, responsible gun owner because of the fact and the actions, because of the actions of a mental defective psychopath. Earlier today, Barack Obama, in full exploitative mode, using the trappings of the Office of the Presidency, Air Force One, and let me remind you, your money allowed one of the Newtown moms to give the radio address today. I won't give her name, and I'm not going to read you the text of the address, not just in the essence of time. You already know what it was. You're a gun owner. You suck. And you are extremist if you don't support common sense change. There's the operative word, change. Yeah, remember the last time we heard that word. Yeah, right. So I'll, I'll leave it at that, and I'll, I'll say to you that if you put yourself out there politically, if you allow yourself to be exploited to this degree, and you put yourself out politically in public, then you should be fully prepared to accept the criticism that comes with that. And believe me, I sympathize with you. I can't imagine the pain and horror your family experienced. I am a father of an 8-year-old and a 10-year-old, but I think the thing that you need to do is really shut your mouth and grieve and get off of my back as a law-abiding American. Alan, is that 
too harsh? No, it's not too harsh, and I, I want to do what you said before the break and talk about how they're exploiting Newtown Please. and the rest of it. This comes down to what I'm doing with Dr. Bruce Eimer, a Ph.D. psychologist. This is hoplophobia run rampant. This is gun fear. And these people are taking a traumatic experience and uh, uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome and a half a dozen other psychological conditions and to cover for them, putting themselves in the political arena. And this is why this particular phobia, hoplophobia, is the most dangerous phobia. If you have aquaphobia, which is very serious, fear of water, you don't buy a home with a swimming pool. Big frickin' deal. And a lot of people have this. If you're afraid of elevators, you walk the stairs. You buy a home that's flat. Who cares? But if you have hoplophobia, and a lot of people do, they're afraid the gun will go off on itself. They're afraid that if you have a gun, you will kill them. And you go into politics, and you affect the Constitution of the United States and you make irrational policies, and you get support from the man in the White House, and you go on national TV, and you attack your fellow human beings because you are hoplophobic and need medical treatment. And Dr. Eimer and I are working on a book on hoplophobia and the effects it is having on America. And this is absolutely critical. If you want to know more about it, Go to gunlaws.com, get on my e-blast list, and you'll get our first paper, which is nearly ready for release. It is going to change the face of the gun debate, because Newtown, which happened 2,400 miles away from me, is generating irrational uh, uh, responses and legislation that has nothing to do with it. They say they want to stop gun violence, and they're trying to disarm Mark and me, which isn't going to help. They're trying to take away property we already own, which they're not allowed to do, which violates every tenet of the American way. They're trying to disgorge and dismember what makes America great because a psychotic went crazy, and they're acting medically dangerously and need treatment, and instead they're getting legislation out of Washington. This is unbelievably dangerous, and hoplophobes need to be recognized, medicated, treated, and gotten out of the political arena because of the harm they can and are doing. And the medical community who says hoplophobia is merely name-calling and isn't a real ailment are absolutely wrong, are in denial, are using every a defense mechanism known to man to prohibit themselves from seeing what is going on in front of their faces with irrational behavior. And if you can't understand that, then you're part of the problem, too. Hoplophobia is underlying these problems we face that affect our very freedoms. If you go to gunlaws.com, there's a hoplophobia button there right now, and you can read about it and see what's happening. But wait till you see the paper that Dr. Eimer and I are working on. It's the first in a series. It's the beginning of a book. We have other doctors and parts of the medical community working with us. Hoplophobia needs a cure. And this comes from a word uh, uh, put together by Colonel Jeff Cooper the father of the modern technique of shooting. You know, in the old days, people used to take out a gun, shoot one-handed from the hip, and look you in the eye. Today, you hold the gun with two hands up at eye level, and you sight the gun for a much better result. Cooper uh, coined the word in 1966, hoplophobia, when he recognized people who had this condition, who were phobic about firearms. And we're starting to see its effect in the political arena, and it is gigantic. And we fight it as legislation and politics, and it is a medical condition. You start watching what's going on. These people are nuts. 
that's what we're dealing with. Uh, you're absolutely right about that. And I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Bruce Eimer, Dr. Eimer, who he refers to, is a good friend of this program, a good friend of mine, therefore a good friend of yours. He's got more letters after his name than the alphabet has. That's true. And he's very good. You can you make sure, again, this is what we're talking about. These are the facts that you don't get from the mainstream media for a number of different reasons. Am I wrong to go after someone who is literally stripping me, doing everything in their power to take my freedoms and my rights. I'm a law-abiding American citizen. I'm not a mentally deranged, derelict psychopath no. that murdered 20 kids and six educators in a classroom. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Get off my back. Am I wrong if she puts herself out in that political arena publicly to, a, to, a, to go after her? You know, I don't think you're wrong. I mean, my heart goes out to her because of her loss, but her anger and her lashing out in the wrong direction is doing nothing any good and even democrat senators have said that such gun laws and such actions would not have prevented sandy hook okay well then that begs the question i'll move over thank you for teeing that up that begs the question david codria we have to assume that they know this and they do know it they know that everything they've proposed nothing would have stopped what happened in Newtown. Nothing. So that begs the question, assuming that they know that, what the hell is their agenda, David? What's their real goal? Well, the, the, the politicians know full well. The uh, people that the politicians are exploiting and using shamelessly, uh, I would submit they, they knew nothing about guns. They knew nothing about rights. They knew nothing about the intent of the founders. Uh, and they would have been anti-gun before any of this happened, but this simply made it personal for them. Uh, you know, like you, Mark, you know, I'm a parent, George is a parent, you're a parent, you know, and we, we have this fierce love for our children that's unlike anything anyone who's not a parent can, can even comprehend. The, the, the love that you have for a child is just so deep, so profound. I can see how the loss would drive a person, uh, you Insane. know. Um, disturbing conversation. It really is. It's not a conversation that I like to have. Sean, let me get your opinion. Yes. That's that. You know, I, I don't want to go after this woman. I, these are, are grieving families. People grieve in different ways. But I got to tell you, man, when you throw yourself out there publicly and allow yourself to be exploited, literally. You know, here's my take on it, because I've talked about this on my video blog. Here's the deal. I don't. It's not the families. I get it because they are grieving. They are hurting very bad. They want, they're trying to heal. I'm more upset with the people that keep putting them, putting them into that scenario. Well, I don't want any of them. I, I want them to grieve. I, I don't yes. want this to be public. It's, it's very, Absolutely. it's very heart wrenching to watch not only their grieving, but also <laughs> their exploitation. Exactly. It's very difficult to watch both. Now, let me say this. There's also, one of the fathers who have come out, he was on, I believe, Megyn Kelly on Fox News. Yes, he was. Uh, discussing uh, just the opposite, mm -hmm. how he disagrees entirely with the other Newtown parents who are coming out and allowing themselves to be exploited. And I'm not going to give you his name either because I want them all. I don't believe that that's the place that they need to be. Well, you know, I think he came out on his own. But the, the, the problem is the media has, and, and you know, some of these representatives, of course, the administrations, have put these people out there, they're using them while they're in a the state of of hurt. And so, you know, my thing is, I understand why the family's doing it, but the representatives and all these people that are putting, you know, the administration, President Obama, all this stuff, they're doing it for their own agenda. Well, of course they are. And that's that's our, where that's we have to go back. Yeah. That's, that's where we have to go back and, and find out what that agenda is. And mm -hmm. as I said in the prior to the last break, that if you... If you assume these things, then you have to ask the question, then what, there's a bigger question here, yes. and that is, if they know that what they're doing isn't going to stop anything, then what is there? Uh, clearly, if you look back at the record, let's go to, uh, as we go around the table, to Alan Corwin. Alan, when you go back and you look at the long history of Chuck Schumer, mm. who's got his fingerprints all over everything that's come up since the Newtown tragedy, when in when you look at the long history and record of him, when you look at Diane Feinstein's history, if I could have done it, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, ban them outright, I would have done it. When you look at that history and you look at the history of Barack Obama, I mean Barack Obama, if you look at his history of gun-hating, freakazoid, 
freedom-hating, gun-hating agenda over his what limited career this man-boy in a suit has had, particularly when it comes to firearms, becomes pretty clear, doesn't it, to be able to formulate a pretty strong opinion as to what his agenda might be, Alan? This is almost old news, Mark. For 20 years, these guys have been trying to disarm America. Schumer is absolutely evil, lies through his teeth. He said into the cameras, and the Associated Press carried it, he said, my bill explicitly does not allow gun registration, and you read his bill, there's no such thing in it. He lies absolutely flat out. For 20 years, he's been trying to ban guns, and he dances in the blood of victims. Mm -hmm. He does it with impunity. He does it with impunity. That's where he's out. Let me switch topics for just a second since Please. I know we're running out of time. The 4th of July is coming up, and that's National Training Week from July 4 to July 11. Our goal is to have everybody in America go to the ranges during 4th of July week and go shooting and practice marksmanship and gun safety. And here's what makes it work, and I want everybody listening to try this. Go to your local range and convince them to take part in National Training Week. And up at gunlaws.com, in the upper right-hand corner, is a logo for National Training Week, and it describes it. There's three simple steps. What the rangers do is offer one-hour free handgun rentals. So it doesn't cost them anything, and you get to try out a handgun that you'd love to try for free. Now, you've got to rent range time. They generally like you to use their ammo, so they make some money. But you can try out that 454 Casul or a 500, you know, a half an inch caliber cannon or a titanium lightweight hammerless with laser, some gun that you've been dying to try out for free because during National Training Week, the ranges let you rent guns for free. You bring newcomers. It's a great idea. And let's flood the ranges during National Training Week. But you've got to get the ranges on the program. Take a look at it up at gunlaws.com, National Training Week. It's endorsed by everybody, the NRA, the CCRKBA, Second Amendment Foundation, the Appleseed Project, Gun Owners of America. Everybody endorses it. It's a great idea. You've got to go to your local range and tell them you guys ought to participate. They can put up the artwork for free. National Training Week during the 4th of July, and we're trying to make Christmas in July. We all give gifts. A lot of you got your first gun during Christmas, under the Christmas tree. Well, some new gun owner, somebody who's gunless right now, and is going to get their first gun, somebody ought to get their gun on the 4th of July Independence Day. Oh, isn't that a great, beautiful thing? What, what a, what a great better way. time to give a gift. Perfect. Independence Day, you get your first gun. Christmas, sure, for kids and a first rifle of 22, but for somebody who's going to get their first 9mm or their first 22 target pistol, Independence Day is a gift-giving holiday. Assuming you can get guns, Obama has helped us sell so many guns that inventory is short. All right, well, ask yourself this question, ladies and gentlemen, when you're listening to what Alan is saying. Is Gabby Gifford's group signed on to this? Are the gun violence and safety prevent the gun safety and violence prevention groups signed on to Gun Safety Week uh, to to Gun National Gun Training Week? No, no, the is the Brady campaign endorsing this? No, the Brady Center for the Promotion of Gun Violence is not a part of it. Oh, so Gabby Gifford's group isn't a part of this, no, and the national that's a group. They just the, named themselves a group, but I don't even know who's in it. If anybody is mm-hmm. the gun violence group, we, you know, let's not even be facetious here. The anti-rights groups, you should never call them anti-gun. They're anti-rights groups, and we're pro-rights groups. The anti-rights groups are not in favor of this. We want to promote gun rights and gun safety and marksmanship, and National Training Week's the time to do it. Gunlaws.com has all the information up there. There's a button in the upper right corner. You should take a look, convince your local range, get everybody on it. I'm working on the groups. I'm, this is one more of these major projects. I've got a list here. You better slow like, down, well, pal. Nah, I like doing it. Work is more fun <laughs> than fun. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you coming up the in NRA uh, the NRA convention. And I will be at the Galco booth if you want to find me and you're in Houston or you're coming to the NRA convention May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. I'll be at the Galco booth from 11 to noon. I'll probably be there longer. You know me. Uh, That's a beautiful thing. Alan Corwin, we've come to a close. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Armed American Radio. I'm Mark Walters. Remember, carry on, carry often, and carry absolutely everywhere.
The Super Tuck by Crossbreed Holsters, the most comfortable and concealable holster available on the market today. Is it any wonder why it's the most copied design on the planet? Used by law enforcement and civilians around the world, the Super Tuck by Crossbreed is adjustable for ride depth and can't. Often imitated, but never duplicated. The Super Tuck holster is available for a wide variety of popular carry guns. For more information and to order your Super Tuck, visit CrossbreedHolsters.com. That's CrossbreedHolsters.com. 